The Outdoor Show. It's the program that puts you into the peaceful and beautiful home of Mother Nature. It moves you back to that calm fishing pond up north, one step away from Lake Michigan, or into your hunting blind on a brisk fall morning. The Outdoor Show. It's a peaceful program. This is not your mother's outdoor show. This is the WHTC Outdoor Show, hosted by a guy who literally has hunting in his name. Tom Mettendorp is Dutch for Village in the Maiden, or King's Hunting Ground. Your co-host, sometimes, is Tim Becker of Powderhorn Guns and Archery. It's time for what really happens when the guys go up north on that hunting trip. It's time for the WHTC Outdoor Show, presented by My Firearms ETS. That's M-I Firearms ETS on 1450 WHTC, Holland's News Leader. Good morning. Welcome to the Outdoor Show. This is Tom Mettendorf. And I'm here with Jamie Krupke this morning. Good morning. How are you, Jamie? Doing just fine. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> we had to get that so I could hear myself. I was rocking. <laughs> it is. It, that's a rocking opening, isn't it? It is. It's awesome. And it, and it mentions my sometimes co-host. Yes. Who sometimes isn't here. Yeah. Who's, well, that seems seat's empty. A, seems to be a void. <laughs> He's not here again. What's up with that guy? We got to give him a harder time. Make sure he gets here. <laughs> well, for those listening, Jamie Krupka is from the Outdoor Discovery Center on the south side of Holland. Um, Fifty-six. 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 Yeah, that's right. You'd, uh, if you want to head out on Lincoln and then uh, head straight south mm-hmm. and then take the big curve around the airport that's uh, right. runway. Yep. And then you go over the viaduct and then a hundred and. It's 142nd is the corner we're at. Uh, yeah, I was thinking we pass 143rd, yep. and it's between there and 142nd, but closest to 142nd. That's right. Yep. Where the elk are. That's exactly right. That's yes. where everybody likes to go see yeah. elk. Yeah. They're, uh, uh, you got you got some uh, nice ones there right yeah, now? Yeah, actually there's a big bull, um, there's a cow, and then there's even a late calf we had. We had a calf born in October. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. I didn't realize yeah, that. Yeah, it's doing well, though. We were a little Isn't concerned it? being such a late. Well, it might have been September, but just saying it was a late birth. So Yeah, that was doing late. all right, though. Yeah, that's just kind of late to be in October. Yeah, yeah. But it's doing well, and it's hanging out. Seems to be doing just fine. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Now, we'll, do you guys let them shed their antlers? We do. The bull? Yep, we do. And then just then pick up the sheds afterwards? We pick up the sheds afterwards. Uh, various t- things we do with them. Sometimes we'll sell them. Sometimes we have people that say, hey, I'll... I'll give you money for those, and so um, we also have some that have been shed that we know that we're going to end up incorporating into displays in the future, things like that. Uh, nice, yep. nice. You know, I was just uh, looking through some of the things that happened this week, mm-hmm. and one of those things was that uh, uh, Senate Bill 789 was vetoed. For people that do not know it, it was vetoed by the governor uh, almost at the last minute. Uh, Seemed like it was, yeah. Yeah, because... Uh, now I'm I I can't say that I'm, you know, 100% educated in uh, political science. <laughs> I certainly am not. Yes. <laughs> but once once a bill is si- is uh, passed by the uh, Senate and by the uh, House of Representatives, and then it goes to the governor's desk, he has 14 days to act on. It. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, I was looking that stuff up, and uh, he has 14 days to act on it. So yesterday, the 16th, was that 14th day. Ah, uh, sure. But on the 15th, the 13th day, yeah. because it, it got there on January 2, they yep. uh, entered it in. Anyway, uh, he finally made a decision on it, and it was uh, the major part was that it was decided or it was understood, I guess, that a person subject to a PPO, the news has been reporting this, the subject to a PPO uh, could get a concealed pistol license. Yeah. And uh, it was just kind of, I think the wording, the wording messes things up. <laughs> As with a lot of those things political, yeah, for sure. Well, and and yeah. it happened to us, uh, you know, um, the wolf hunt mm-hmm. was designed to reduce the number of wolves because we went above what we had looked for. Yep. And then a federal judge from D.C. decided, well, no, we're going to put them back on the endangered list. Mm. And you know me, I, I love the wolves. I, I think they're awesome. But I also think that we need to control those things, uh, you know, sure. so we don't get out of hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think that 
misunderstandings happen a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think as, as by design. They do. <clears throat> yeah. And, and that's, that's the weird part. That's, that's, that's the frustrating <laughs> part. <laughs> it's definitely frustrating when, when you're, you're thinking, okay, this is good, but then there's something in one of the bills that you know, yep. uh, messes it up. Yep. Well, because of these things that people don't understand how this works, we are going to be um, doing some interviews mm-hmm. and getting some information from our senators and, le- and uh, uh, representatives. Good, yeah. Posting them on our YouTube channel. Oh, nice. At uh, Michigan Firearms. Okay. Uh, which is MI Firearms ETS, as everybody hears in the opening. Sure. Uh, but it's uh, we're going to be posting those on our YouTube channel. And currently we have um, firearm safety videos going mm-hmm. out. Our Monday moment is focused around safety. Yep. And uh, we're sending those out. They're just a five-minute video. So people that want to watch that video, they can go and subscribe to our YouTube channel at uh, MIFirearmsETS.com or Michigan Firearms, and they can get this this Monday moment. And it just helps with attitude and uh, realizing there's things we don't know about safety that we just don't consider a lot of times. For sure. So those those are going out uh, on the YouTube channel, and people are, are enjoying them by the response. Good. So. It's. Just, I mean, I've got the looks for radio, but with with, <laughs> with, with the YouTube channel for YouTube. <laughs> well, we, we sp- spruced it up a little bit. I sit. I sit in a nice leather chair. I like, I by like a the fire. nice little crackling fire. <laughs> Did you watch them? I watched that first one. Did you like it? That was interesting. Did, I, did, I, I, yeah. I wouldn't have put you on a YouTube video, so <laughs> you did all right. <laughs> I am not the kind that prefers that type of media. So yeah, I uh, you know and and keep a keep a watch for it. Um, as we go, we're actually, you know, I'm I'm there by the fire, but mm-hmm. then I'm demonstrating some things that people don't understand about always point the gun in a safe direction. Oh yeah, always keep your finger off the trigger until sure. you're ready to shoot, and always keep the gun unloaded until you're ready to use it. And there's actually an interesting story. I don't know if it's this coming Monday or the one after. Um, we we did a few of them in order, and my son, you know, he's the tech guy. Oh, he, oh yeah. He, he puts it on the YouTube. <laughs> he's your producer. He he, was... Producer, yeah. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got a clue what to do. <laughs> I can say record, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and stop. <laughs> but the uh, it's 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 a different type of media that everybody's using. Yeah, uh, and we just thought that this would be a great way to catch people and have them be able to get some good information for sure uh and that leads me to do you over at odc do you guys do that type of media out there we're slowly building into it we do have a uh, a contract with a professional videographer oh we, sure, we know we sure. Are, just because ours we, wasn't professional we, we know we know we are limited and we know that we don't have to have the person like your son who can do all the fancy oh stuff. so you you're the so, on off guy yeah we, I, we're a lot closer to the on off guy i might be just a hair above you on the uh electronic stuff but just i same. would hope so you're younger we, than i am <laughs> uh we do have a person that uh, has helped us create some pretty uh, great videos nice. about the outdoor discovery center as, as well as about little hawks discovery preschool so Sweet. um there's um, ten minute video we actually pre- uh, created about a fifty minute long video too about uh, project clarity so there's there 's a variety of things, and we do have a channel that we 're slowly building more and more things into and that 's on your youtube channel it is the outdoor discovery center if you look at you look on youtube um, it's i i, I don 't remember the the whole address but i'm sure if you search for outdoor discovery center it, it will pop up well with outdoor discovery center because we can get to your website by going to outdoor discovery center.org that's correct yeah and uh, if we go there can we subscribe to the youtube channel on there? not through the website i'm still working on it oh, as limited the, okay. technology as i am with these things i'm our web designer <laughs> yeah are you really oh yeah so well i just pulled up the odc we're working on it <laughs> This is cool. <laughs> yeah, we've got a new site that we just launched uh, a little, little over a month ago now. And so we're, we're still oh. working out some kinks. But uh, one of the things would be a subscribership that for YouTube, uh, MailChimp. I'm not f- I'm sure if you're familiar with that. but uh, MailChimp, subs- yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, things like that, we're working into it. Okay. The uh, So to go to the YouTube channel, if we go to YouTube. You go to YouTube and, and search for Put in Outdoor Discovery Center, yeah, we can yeah. get there. Oh, here's my favorite, Live Birds of Prey. That's right. You know that's my yeah. favorite. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> One of the things that makes the job fun. Yeah, the uh, this looks really nice, Jamie. No, thanks. If you're, you know, 
we had help from a, a, a marketing firm um, that actually okay. Murdoch Marketing set it up for us. But then we've been filling in content. Oh, okay, they did all from, the... Yeah, the from uh, scratch with WordPress stuff? Uh-uh, that's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just looking at it and thinking, this is, this is pretty neat. Uh, it's it's different than it was before, and you got the the flashing banner yep. uh, for the different uh, items that are happening, so people don't have to search for them. They're yeah. right there on the yeah, opening yeah. Uh, to do that. User friendly compared to the other site is the the, the idea. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. we like we like user friendly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we like user friendly. <laughs> the uh, anyway, we we're going to talk more about the Outdoor Discovery Center when we come back, and and more things that are happening uh, around the area. Uh, locally. Uh, so we'll talk to you in just a little bit, little bit. The Outdoor Show is brought to you by Westernbrook Mower, where they service what they sell. All units are ready to use when they leave the store, and Westernbrook submits your warranty information so you don't have to. Stop into the Holland or the Genesis store, check them out on your computer at westernbrookmower.com, or call them at 616-396-5733. Lines are open. Give us a call, 395-1450. We'll be back here shortly on The Outdoor Show. Welcome back to the Outdoor Show, brought to you by Lakeshore Tackle and Firearms, your full-service gun dealer stocking new and used firearms, Glock, Sig, Sauer, Ruger, and more. Lakeshore Tackle and Firearms are buyers of all kinds of firearms located at 6398 Blue Star Highway, just six short miles south of Holland at exit 41. Find them on your computer at lakeshoretackleandfirearms.com. We're back, ready to talk with you. Give us a call, 395-1450. I'm here with Jamie Krupka from the Outdoor Discovery Center. And uh, you're not far from Lakeshore Tackle and Firearms, are you? Not far at all. No. no. Do they? Uh, do you? Do you have any partnership with them? No particular no? partnership with them. No. Well, no. we got to get you down there and set something up. I, I actually never been in there. Oh, you haven't? No. no. Oh well, then we definitely have to get you down there. <laughs> you just got to go. Driven I mean, by it, just never you, been in there. You're so close to uh, Blue Star Highway. Yeah. You jump on Blue Star, yeah, buzz around there. Yep. And then uh, you know when you when you take 196 and you hit Exit 41. Mm-hmm. You take a, a right there when you come off the ramp, and that very first light, yep, it's right there. That right, that light. That's what is that? Sixty fourth. Yes. It come, it's old yep. Saugatuck Road yes. coming out yep. of the, you know, the, the south side. Yeah, of the and it only goes to the north yep. there yep. at the light, but to the south there yep. is the driveway into Aaron's uh, shop there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, driven by it, just never been in it. Oh man, you got to go in there. Yeah. He's got fishing gear galore. He's got some nice, nice gun cases with you know the guns all laid out. It's a it's a nice layout. Nice. It's a nice layout. You got to go see Aaron and uh, get you some ice fishing equipment. That's right. Going to need it soon. Pick up your pistol. Sure. (laughs) I went through Uh, hunter safety. That's a start, Tom. (laughs) We got you started. We got you started. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. And, you know, hunter safety by you guys, you just do the field day, right? We, yeah. uh, You're not doing the the full. Right, right. Um, We have uh, one of our staff that is, uh, well, actually, there's four of us now. Actually, I'm... Did you get certified? I, I did. I really? did. I helped with this past fall's uh, workshop uh, uh, training. Nice. And now um, the the paperwork's in the mail, but <laughs> I think the idea would be that I would also be part of that training team. So Sweet. we offer field days, um, and then the this DNR is encouraging more and more groups like ours to yes. to do that, where they you do an online course, yep. and then you come to a place like ours for a field day. So that's right. the route like, we've taken. Um, we, you know, you guys have reduced it to doing that because mm-hmm. it's difficult to schedule. We have place. a lot going on, so it, it made it yeah. more sense for us as an organization to offer yeah. it that way. Yeah, and then, um, you know, as w- my group, when we do it, we do the full blown course right. yet. Right. And there's such a mix of people that we'll even get people call us up to do the field day. Well, say we have room for 50 and we yeah. end up with 35 in class, and then we get 15 to come for the field day. Yep. Well, it never fails. There's 20, 25, or 30 that want to come for the field day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they got their certificate from the oh, internet yeah. training, and they want to come to the field day. And uh, uh, it's it makes it difficult to say, well, we don't have enough room because I don't have enough stuff for you. Yeah. Uh, so we, we made some arrangements so that we can accommodate. Oh, that's good. 
But then also, I know we've sent some people your way, and you've sent some people our yeah. way because they yeah. can't. Uh, it just make dates the date. wise, yeah, yeah, conflicts of schedule. But yeah, it, and we have the same situation. Last uh, spring, we ended up planning for twenty five people. And we had 75. <laughs> so we had to go knocking on doors of our friends who are also certified. And we have oh, a number goodness. of people that are certified. So yep. we actually pulled some friends up from another nature center down at Kalamazoo. And Excellent. we ended up, ended up having 75 people certified in a day. That's awesome. Yeah. What, what kind of things do you guys do during your field? Because I remember when I started doing them with yeah. you guys yeah. so that uh, we could get you started. Yeah. Um, when you would come in and do the identification and stuff, yep. the kids absolutely love that because you had – you work with kids – you know, we work with kids too, and I'm, right. a, I'm you know school teacher. But you had information that they really enjoyed. Do you do tracking? We do. And stuff? We do tracking. Well, I actually the the part that I'm going to be helping out most with is uh, is the tracking and survival. And Sweet. so uh, I, I we have a variety of things we we talk about, but we certainly teach them how to use a compass. We mm-hmm. teach them about survival gear, survival situations. We're not going to do the whole scout thing and have you know the fake blood right. broken arm thing but <laughs> but we do talk about situations um yeah. we also uh um, cover how to use a map there's a lot of okay. people out there that rely on good old handy dandy smartphones well <laughs> guess what when you're out in the back 40 or you're against the lake shore or who go, who knows where you are the so, smartphone doesn't always know no it doesn't it's not so smart when it can't see a satellite so we try to teach how to use a, a map uh, we well, also teach yeah. about falconry, uh, mm-hmm. wildlife identification. See, uh, that's the really like that. cool thing. Yep. I remember, you know, we would we'd do the falconry stuff uh, yep. over by your place, but then also when we were over by uh, Chickawa, yep. when we would teach them over there, uh, and we'd split the class up yep. so that we'd have them at both locations, that you guys would come with the uh, falcons. Yep. Uh, and that was just a lot of fun. Yeah. It was really cool. Yeah. It's an interesting part of, of hunting, certainly that heritage of hunting going back thousands of years. Oh, and yeah. falconry is right at the root of it. Yeah, and you've been on the falconry hunt. I have been on hunts, yeah. It's pretty yeah. exciting. And, and I've been there, too. Yeah. And, and i got to get Tim to go on one yet because <laughs> it, it's, it's really cool to watch oh, yeah. the bird work. Oh, for sure. You know, it's, uh, I remember a time we were sitting, we had a, there was a squirrel in the tree, and the bird wanted that squirrel. Yeah. But the bird has to get the squirrel at a certain point. Point or the squirrel will damage his legs. Well, yeah. If, if if the bird's not careful, or in the handler of the bird's not careful, they could send the bird off to a situation that's unsafe for the bird. Right. So uh, you know, and, and some smart birds will actually go in there and start you know ripping apart a leaf nest of a squirrel. They'll go in there and they'll start just tearing it up. But uh, maybe an inex- inexperienced bird, if it's trying to do that, could get bit. Right. And you'd be surprised at how many times the predator, like a hawk or a falcon or an owl, actually gets injured by its prey doesn't take much you know a stiff bite um, yep. scratch might not immediately kill the predator might not kill that bird of prey but it could lead to an infection that leads to its demise well, so. that, that reminds me now this goes back quite a few years yeah. and you might remember when i was uh i was looking i was checking one of our hunting spots for the firearm deer season yeah the day before i came across a red tail hawk that has wings completely spread out and you're oh, yeah. sitting on the ground do yeah. you remember that story? I, I i remember only that you were concerned about it but i i think i convinced you that it was just mantling but maybe it was hurt. I don't remember. No, that might have been a different story. Okay. This one, I ended up calling uh, Roger Howard. Oh, no, no I do remember. Yeah, up in Grand Haven. Yeah. I'm not sure he still does that, but I re- do remember now. Yeah. And he had yeah. the bone infection. Yeah. And it took almost six months. Yeah. Because it was the following March that um, we released him and he on came my back, son's back birthday. To the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He came back to that same area to release him, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. right. Same yeah. spot that, yeah. uh, that we uh, retrieved him. Sure. That uh, we released him when he was all healed. And yeah. it was a female. And yeah. She... And uh, she hung around, and we could we could definitely tell the difference. She huh. hung around our area for years. Nice, uh, you know, difference between the hawks. When you when you watch them a lot, you can see which ones yeah, are which. The, yeah, exactly. And it was it was a really neat experience. It was my son's tenth birthday oh, when we released fun. it. Yeah, that's memorable. <laughs> oh yeah, we have we have pictures and everything because all his buddies came over sure. you know, when they were ten years old. Oh and, yeah, that's ex- and, <laughs> super exciting for a ten year old to see a hawk like that. Definitely, definitely the. Uh, no, it's to have kids experience those things through the hunter safety program. Yeah, it's it, it's invaluable. Yeah. It's it's you, you can't put a price tag on that, and uh, we just you know we wouldn't do it if we didn't enjoy doing it. Yep. Yeah, I'm looking at my daughter who's 11 now this year, going mm-hmm. through the spring session. So sweet. Yep. Get her get her going. Get her started. That's right. Get her started. Now we're gonna have to make a a big game hunter out of you. Uh, small <laughs> steps, baby steps. <laughs> 
Plenty good. The Farmer's Co-op Elevator in Hudsonville is your food plot headquarters with over 40 different seed varieties to choose from, providing in-house soil testing as well as fertilizers, lime, equipment to plant, maintain, and get maximum performance out of your food plot. Visit the Farmer's Co-op at 3302 Prospect Street in Hudsonville. For a complete list of products and services, check them out online at fcelevator.com. Lines are open. Give us a call, 395-1450. We'll be back here shortly on The Outdoor Show. Welcome back to The Outdoor Show, brought to you by... Powderhorn Guns and Archery for all your arrow knocking, gun cocking, fish hooking, flag waving, stand up and sing God bless America hunting and fishing needs. Lines are open. Give us a call 395 1450. We're back ready to answer your questions right here on the Outdoor Show. I think last week Chris said I should have just become a radio announcer. <laughs> Oh, I enjoy doing that one. But anyway, <laughs> everybody's looking at me funny here. There were in no studio. crickets, I promise. <laughs> so, for those of you just joining us, I'm talking with Jamie Krupka from the Outdoor Discovery Center, and we're talking about all things wild. That's right. right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> we we talked a little bit, you know, in the in the previous segments about uh, uh, raptors and different things with that. We talked about some things coming up. We talked about some weekly news. If you want to get the, the rest of the show, you can go to whtc.com and uh, find the podca- podcast for the outdoor show by going to media podcast. Scroll it down, and there you are. And the outdoor show. There's several. Uh, well, episodes yeah <laughs> <laughs> saved there uh as well as you can get uh the outdoor show on facebook it's facebook the outdoor show and uh, my son's been posting it with graphics nice uh which is i have not neat. been to that i'll have to check it out i it's... did not realize you're <laughs> you're on facebook yeah well yeah the outdoor show on facebook <laughs> we've got my firearms ets on facebook nice too. <laughs> nice the uh you know you, you have to hit that media yeah I'm, gotta, I'm not one to get on there and say I vacuumed the floor today. <laughs> well, that's good because I—I'll be honest, Tom. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've seen those. Oh, and those are the I worst. Just, I just go past those them. Are the worst. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> I just—I I don't know. I—I I, I hate to say it because you know people I know they're probably going, oh man he he thinks I'm depressed or I'm disappointed or I'm lonely. <laughs> well, don't post that. Post that's something right. cool. Uh, you know, and we've even got a Twitter. What? Yes. Wow. Last weekend, Jacob and I were down at Kalamazoo uh, Gun and Knife Show. Yeah. Jake, Jake, Nate, and myself, and yeah. I, I even tweeted out. I learned how to tweet. Oh. <laughs> I, I can tweet my twits. <laughs> you just jumped a couple of, like, a, a century in technology. That's awesome. I did. I still am very on the periphery of Twitter. I, I just haven't gotten into it. I can't wait till the full season kicks in. Yeah. So I can hit the, 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 the tweeter thing, the Twitter things. Yeah. Uh, the tweets to the twits. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> is it a tweet when I tweet it, or is it a twit when I twit it? <laughs> I twat, I twat, twat, you put it at. Anyway, um, you know, it'll be kind of cool uh, if you're on Twitter. You'll be able to do that during the hunter safety yeah, program. Good. To just yep. tweet out what's going on with the kids, what yep. they're doing. I think that uh, people could get really interested in that because there's you have unique things that you do at the uh, Outdoor Discovery Center. I was just going to say the ODC. Well, I don't want anybody to be confused. It's the Outdoor Discovery We'd Center. We'd like to think everybody knows that that means, but we do try to say Outdoor Discovery Center. <laughs> yeah. well, it's like when I say my firearms ETS, they think I'm talking about my firearms, <laughs> uh, but it's MI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the uh, Well, being down at the show, February 21, I didn't know if you know this, we have the Holland Gun and Knife Show. Yep. I do know. It's the original Holland Gun and Knife Show, and it's been going on for 28 years already. No kidding. I did not realize that. 28 years. Wow. And uh, we've got some special plans that I can't reveal yet because I don't have everything lined up just right. But uh, I think people want to make sure that they keep an eye on, you know, keep an ear on us here at the Outdoor uh, outdoor Show. And then also they're probably going to want to get down to uh, the Holland Gun and Knife Show because we've got some special events happening throughout the day. Now, where is that happening? Is it it's in the gonna... parking lot of HTC here, or <laughs> where's it at? Well, it's going to be close to the parking lot of HTC. Not too far from. Because it's going to be at the Civic Center. Civic Center. It'll be right at the Holland Civic yes. Center. Good venue for it. 
Oh, it's a, it's a beautiful venue yeah. for it. It it works out great. Yeah. It's 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 a, you know it's, it's been here a long time. Everybody knows where it is. Yep. They come out and they and they check out the the all the guns and knives and stuff. And there's there's I mean there's stuff for everybody there. And what I really like is it's it's focused around guns and knives, not. And I, I don't want to say this because some people might think that I'm talking about them, but you know it's 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 not a flea market. Yes, right. Where, where I've been to gun shows that are they turn into that. Yeah, yeah. And, okay. and that you know sometimes some of the things that are there are are, are associated, but other things aren't associated, and it's kind of hard to figure out what, yeah. what what's going on here. This is the the pure but, event you're talking about. It's, yeah, of it's course, guns it is. and knives. That's because it. it's Holland's original <laughs> gun and knife show. <laughs> but it's our, you know they're all local people. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's lots of good deals that are, are there, and uh, people can get down there. The show runs from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on February 21. Uh, so if they get in early, check things out, then they can head on over. We're going to talk about what's going on by That's you. That's right, yep. <laughs> but if they want to come, there's a lot of people that wait in the morning mm-hmm. early. Yeah. We're going to be serving Big B. Oh, coffee, Big coffee B. And nice, nice. And that's that's compliments of Michigan Firearms. Well uh, done. That will be outside before the, the sure. doors open, sure. so people that are you know sitting there cold yeah. waiting to get in, they'll be able to get coffee and hot cocoa. Talking hunting stories, fishing oh, yeah. stories. And we're going to broadcast live on that. Morning. Are you? Yeah. Live broadcast. Right, right, right there. Nice. Well, this is live broadcast, but, well, but on location. Yeah, there you go. On, on there you go. That's, see, I'm not up in the lingo. <laughs> I'm not either, and I've been doing this for seven and a half years. <laughs> I need some training. Yeah. <laughs> so, but now, over at the ODC, February 21, there's going to be a cool program yep. starting at 11, right? Yeah, we have. Um, we try to do it every every other week. We have an 11 o'clock program, and it happens to be that on February 21, the program we're doing is uh, Animal Mythbusters. And so the whole idea is, um, you know, there's a lot of people that think crazy things like owls can turn their heads all the way around. <laughs> or you know, and they can't. Just because they've seen that they're, on TV. Yeah, they're a vertebrate, so they can't. You know, but those are kind of the things that we try to dispel. You know, right? bats, bats aren't blind. Yeah. Um, things like that. And, and the idea being it's just a fun opportunity for people to learn about wildlife. So it's called Animal Mythbusters on the 21st at 11 o'clock. And it's, and it's an hour-long program. So they'll when they're done, they can go get some lunch, head back to well, they can go show. back, or or if they're not an a early riser. Well, that's true. If you know, they're they're not into the coffee, yeah. you know. And then they can hit the hit the um, animal mythbusters, yep. and then head over Still to the have show. Three hours at the gun and knife show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's nine a.m. to three p.m. That's right. <laughs> okay, now I want to talk ice fishing. Yes, because next week Saturday, the twenty fourth, we do have some ice fishing going on, and ice it appears fishing. that the ice will cooperate. Well, I hope so. I, you would think so. It's going to be warm so. today. Yeah, but it should should not affect. Because yeah. um, the temperature keeps it. going up. Yeah, it started off at 18 degrees this morning at about 4 o'clock or whatever uh-huh. it is. Now it's almost 30. Yeah, 29 yeah. degrees yeah. right now. Yeah. From when I left the house to come here, it's gone up 5 degrees. Yeah, I know. It's been ever rising. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it's going to be a warm one today, but next week I think uh, it's going to drop back down, and at night it's going to be cold. Yeah, and that's – it's we have – Plenty of inches of ice on the on the the ponds right now. Excellent. So, yeah, we should so be fine. So, when you do this, do you teach them all about drilling the hole? Yes. Yeah, we don't have the the uh, the kind with an uh, an auger that has a, a gas powered auger. So we're getting them right down there. Oh, so this is augers. for the young and healthy. Oh yeah, right, <laughs> sure, yeah. Or else you bring with you a young and healthy. <laughs> Uh, um, but it's intended for families. It's not, certainly not the hardcore fishermen that are out on Lake Mac and the right. zero degrees kind of stuff. Right. This is for the kids that have always wanted to do it, for the people that have always wanted to try it out. This yep. is your kind of your taste of ice fishing, yep. and I, it, it's a good time. I, I didn't have all the equipment, and my son really wanted to go ice fishing, so I called up a friend, and we yep. went out ice fishing. So the three of us go out on the ice, and uh, he had so much fun drilling holes. He didn't have a gas <laughs> power. He just had the, had the yep. auger, you know, do it by hand. He had so much fun drilling holes. Brad and I were fishing for, uh, you know, through the ice already, and he's going around trying to find new holes. Oh. <laughs> and he's drilling, and after a while, you know, he'd, he'd drill, and then Brad had one of these Vexilars yeah. to, to stick in the hole yep. there and, and do the sonar thing. Yep. And uh, he'd, he'd check if there's any fish, and he'd go to the next he hole and check. Yeah. <laughs> and the next thing we know, he's gone all the way around us. Oh. And I'm thinking like the cartoons. Yeah, perforated. He perforated the ice right around you. You're going to be on your little iceberg. Well, we can rest assured that's not going to happen no, at the ODC. it will right? not. It will not happen. We will get people involved in ice fishing. We have all the equipment. We've got the uh, fishing poles. We've got the bait. You just need to show up ready to be outside. It's from 11 to 2. So you don't have to be there the whole time. You can come in for okay. just, just an hour. You want to just, just test it out. Now, um, once you put them through the ice, put the hole through there, do you... 
do they just fish and then you see if you get a bite uh, and, and you do the techniques used yeah, in ice fishing? Right. But then is there, do you have anything electronic? We don't. You we know, don't move, use moving, any. Moving if, uh, up if, in the world. No. If <laughs> they would like to bring, if, you know, somebody's, a, you know, a, there's a, there's a, person out there who's an ice fisherman ice fisher woman that has all the technology in there they don't want to take their kid out under the middle of the lake right now to do it bring it okay. with you you can test it out and show your kid how it works you know um, okay absolutely you can bring that with you we're going to go low tech you want to bring the high tech you can i i remember growing up of course we didn't have the high tech so yeah. it was everything was low tech <laughs> yeah i remember spending several hours you know uh fishing and then we were taught well you need to drill another hole yeah. go to a different spot yeah. and see what you get and once yeah. you hit it they just come right you know and, you got a good uh, good spot you got a sweet spot yeah because yep. they're not they're not under the ice they're not swimming everywhere they're kind of hanging out that's you right gotta you gotta find look that for that little spot. hole where they're yeah pocket it up yeah and okay so it makes it easier to use the technology yeah but sometimes it takes away the fun oh yeah you know it depends on what you're if it's you know, if you're real serious about catching fish, yeah. you, you better get to... one of them Vexilars and get oh, yeah. out there. Yeah, we, we have fun with it. It is all catch yeah. and release, um, uh-huh. and it is intended for all ages. Uh, we don't have ice shanties out there and stuff like that, so it's just go right. out and stand on the pond for a little while. You want to go inside, warm up with some hot chocolate, and then go back outside. You can do that. We'll end up fishing at the elk pond, so we won't have the elk out there. We'll move the elk so that you don't have to have... <laughs> elk wrangling on top of uh, ice fishing. But. Now, that would be a cool experience for me. I'm ice fishing, and an elk comes up and nudges me on the shoulder. I'm not so sure the nudge would be as enjoyable as you think it might be. He still has his antlers, Tom. <laughs> well, we'll wait till he drops them. Will it still be cold? <laughs> It'll still be cold. It should be in uh, March or April. Uh, the ice might not My, be. I, ice would likely not be around. I know uh, we've gone... Up north to hunt for sheds mm-hmm. uh, where the elk herds are. Oh yeah, and so on. And you got to hit it just right, otherwise, if you if they drop them and then you get a big snowstorm, they're all covered. Yeah, well, <laughs> and those rodents they love chewing on them. So yeah, you get the very uh, uh, ambitious rodents. They're going to start tearing them up right off. Oh yeah, we found them too late. Yeah, and they've been all tore up yeah. from yep. from the rodents chewing on them. Yep, a lot of protein in those or something. Right? Yeah, there's it, it's I, I I don't know exactly know that the, the keratin is is going to be good for a, an animal, but the rodents sure love it. Okay, okay. Now uh, we're gonna cover some more activities going on over at the uh, Outdoor Discovery Center when we come back. But I gotta remind people if you want to get into fishing, whether it be ice fishing or whether it be uh, summertime fishing, the the Really great place that I've come across, and we've had Jim Brandt here several times, the West Michigan Walleye Club. Mm. West Michigan Walleye Club. You get a membership for 30 bucks. Okay. They have tournaments all year long. Your membership covers your tournament fees. No kidding. So you just join the tournament. That's a good deal. And there's, you're not going to get a cash payout, but what you are going to get is all these guys are catching fish, and they're teaching each other how to do you it. You better believe it, yeah. So I think West Michigan Walleye Club is an excellent place to go Great. Uh, if you want to learn more about fishing. And walleye is good eating. Yeah, yeah, it is. (laughs) The Outdoor Show is brought to you by Advantage Marine with competitive prices and personalized service to meet all your needs. Repair, storage, winterizing, parts, and more. Call Advantage Marine in Zealand at 616-748-9235 or stop in to see Dave at 8755 Riley Street in Zealand. That's at the corner of 88th and Riley on the northeast side of Zealand. Lines are open. Give us a call, 395-1450. We'll be back here shortly on The Outdoor Show. Gunsmithing, exclusive dealer for Leatherwood Hilux Optics and 300 Below Cryogenics Freezing, as well as firearms repair, specializing in Mauser rifle custom work and restoration. MOA Gunsmithing is your accuracy headquarters for target and varmint shooting. Visit knowyourzero.com for rifle builds, accuracy tests, and product reviews. Call 616-502-3374. MOA Gunsmithing, right on, dead on, all the time. Oh, well, we're in our last segment already, Jamie. It's gone fast. It always goes fast. You know, You know how many times haven't we said we could do this for two hours? Sure. <laughs> the, uh, you know, the ice fishing going on on next week, Saturday. Don't yeah. miss out on that for people. It starts at 2 p.m.? Um, I think it goes 11 to 2 is actually. Yeah, oh, right. I'm sorry. I was looking two, at the so wrong. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm using the Outdoor Discovery uh, Center's website. That's good. The new website. And uh, uh, it starts at 11. Yep. 
ends at two. Yep. So it's, it's three hours of fishing. Three hours of fishing, and it's 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 only five dollars a person to fish. Three dollars if you're a member. That's just to help us cover some of the costs. We got the worms, we got the lures, we got the the oh, I all got the you. stuff. Okay. And that's, then we also um, provide you with some hot chocolate to warm up. Gotcha. That's down at the bottom here. Yep. And, and as I say down at the bottom here, I'm talking about the Outdoor Discovery Center's website, which is a really sweet website. And, and Jamie, the non-technical guy, is building it. <laughs> <Filling <laughs> but he's more holes, technical I mean, than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's the Family Ice Fishing, the 24th, 11 to 2. Um, yeah, that's all materials are provided. Every yep. All the details are here. So more discover or oh, <laughs> more discovery, Outdoor Discovery, do, Outdoor Discovery Center dot org. So the whole... Outdoor Discovery Center is what you would uh, put in there, dot .org. We've also bought the domain OutdoorDiscovery.org. OutdoorDiscovery.org. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. You could go either way. You have to have some of those domains to make sure that it gets <laughs> That's where That's exactly what go. we did, yeah. <laughs> um, the, now, I clicked on that for the, once I passed over it on the calendar, then I go down to, there's a description comes up and says more details. So yep. you've got to put your mouse over that, slide down, grab that more details, and then it's got everything out here, and it's got uh, uh, who to who it's created by on the calendar. Oh, it does say that? Yeah, it says huh. you created it. Huh, what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see, registration is required. That's yeah, something please. we Yeah, so we know how many required. people to expect. Yep. Uh, that would be important, yeah. We want to make sure that uh, that Jamie doesn't get overwhelmed with too many people. To That's fish. right. I went to a youth fishing event once with my kids. Yeah. We call it the Hook and Eye Fest. Oh. <laughs> it was on a pond, and there were too many kids. Oh, my gosh. They were just lined all oh, around no. the pond. <laughs> Catching <laughs> more kids than fish? Well, yeah, it was, too. Yeah. And I just, I'm accustomed. When I go fishing, I like to be kind of alone, oh, yeah. you know, to fish. Whoever's in a boat yeah. with you oh, or yeah. whatever. Uh, but I don't like being in that big crowd. It's a non-peaceful experience you're saying it was? <laughs> yes. I said to my, son, my wife, I said, I'm not doing this next <laughs> year. I'm not doing this next year. Uh, but anyhow... Uh, what about what about Friday? What's a hot chocolate walk? A uh, hot chocolate walk. That's something we're doing with Park Township. And actually, the idea is we'll go over and explore Camp Geneva's Pines site. Oh. And we'll snowshoe hike there, do some owl calling, check out wildlife tracks. Um, but nice. then the whole, you know, the hook on it is after you're done, we'll give you some hot chocolate. Aha. Uh, well, that, it'll be kind of cool because you'll be using Ojibwe-style snowshoes. That's right. Yep. Everybody, of course, has to dress for the weather. Yep, and it, there's enough snow now. So the, there was one of those things. It's caveats on that as always. We've got to make sure we have four inches of snow, but it should not be any problem having enough snow to well, hike there. And what's nice about today being warm, people are thinking the snow is going to melt away. Well, what happens, the snow compacts sure. more, and it gives a better layer that stays put. Nice base. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Once you have that base, then you don't. I've been in fluffy snow up to my mid thigh. Yeah, <laughs> it's not fun. It's a good workout. Yeah. Well, it's definitely a good workout. But we went with snowshoes. Yeah, and uh, you know we would take turns leading the pack, oh, yeah. so to speak, to pack it down in front of you. And at one point, my buddy said, "I'm sick of these snowshoes. This is hard work." He takes them off. Oh, and that's a bad cutting. choice. Yeah. <laughs> he went up to his waist in the oh, snow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He says, "Okay, so I should keep the snowshoes on, huh?" <laughs> yes, they actually serve a function. <laughs> Uh, it was it was a lot of fun, uh, but it definitely is a workout. Yeah, uh, that doesn't mean you wouldn't go uh, because you think it's too much of a workout. Right, you can walk slowly. You can you can make it a hard workout. Yeah, uh, we used to do that the Upper Mekatawa watershed. Oh yeah, uh, you know that the area. Upper Mekatawa natural area is is a huge property, and so oh, all the it. lowlands down there. Yeah, yep. we go in from the seventy sixth street right. entrance. Yep. Because that backside doesn't get near as much traffic. Yeah, right. Uh, you, when you go to the other side, the 84th off of 84th, Street, yeah. there's it, more, ma- yeah. much more people there, uh, many more people. But we um, we go in there, and what's neat is after a fresh snow, you can find the coyote tracks, oh, you yeah. can find the squirrel tracks, you can find the rabbit tracks, you know, everything's there. Sure. And it's neat just to identify it. When our kids were younger, we would go snowshoeing all the time yeah. back there. And, uh, of course, I take the dog along. And <laughs> the dog is forever chasing things. Well, I got to keep you. Got to keep him on a leash. Oh, there. that's true. Well, yeah. this is at the time. This is probably before it was owned by the county, wasn't, wasn't it? When your well, kids were yeah. Younger? Well, back then, yeah. we'd go canoeing through there whenever the waters uh, would come up. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of fun. Nice. Uh, the and then the dog would run. The sure. dog would actually jump out of the canoe and then run sure. along the bank yeah. and then come back and we'd get him back in the canoe. Now it is you know a sight that you yeah. do after you have your dog on a have leash. To have your leash. <laughs> but at the time when you're talking about, yeah, you had a little bit. Uh, well, and then more. after it, when the county owned it. Then we would go, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'd take the dog on a leash. Yeah. Well, <laughs> as long as things were packed down by my kids ahead of time, he yeah. could go in front of me. Oh, yeah. 
and he'd do pretty good. And then he'd get this idea he'd want to go off to the side. <laughs> Disappear in the snow. <laughs> he'd just drop right down in there, <laughs> and he'd be with his head, you know, sticking up above the... <laughs> Above the snow. So snowshoeing is a lot of fun. And the hot chocolate walk being a snowshoeing uh, thing, mm, yep. that's kind of neat. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that. Uh, you know, we talked last week with Rob Venner uh, about the, uh-oh, i got to remember the right name, when they got it, the torches. Torchlit. Oh, the torchlit, uh, the snowshoe hike at Van Ralty Farm. Thank yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Those, those are cool, cool snowshoe events, oh, yeah. too. Now, you have, people can come out to the ODC, and yeah. they can snowshoe at the ODC right. right yeah, now. We right? do have snowshoes that are designed anywhere from, I usually tell people, ages 8 and up. And then, so we have three different okay. size snowshoes. People could come out and borrow them. We only actually uh, charge anyone that's 13 or uh, 14 and up. So okay. 13 and under is free. So, you know, the 8 to 13-year-olds, you, 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 your, your third graders and, and up through, yep. you know, the, the, the 13-year-olds, you can go for free. Just the parents got to pay. And it's $5 to rent them as long as you'd want during our business hours. Oh, nice. So you nice. could come in at 10 o'clock this morning and keep them until 3 o'clock this afternoon if you want. I'm sure you won't because you'll be exhausted, <laughs> but you could do it. If, if you walk that long on snowshoes, believe me, you will be exhausted. <laughs> yes. I need to ask, though, before we you know, before we run out of time here, Surviving Winter yep. ODC Homeschool. Yeah, we actually offer programs for homeschoolers, and that's one of them that we're offering. And it's the whole idea. Actually, the idea would be hopefully to go ice fishing on Monday as well. But um, oh, okay. So it's... Opportunities for homeschool families to get their kids involved in outdoor education, and that one is Surviving Winter. This is a second of a three-part class. Okay, so when people see ODC Homeschool, mm-hmm. that, and it's 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 during the day, 1230 yeah. to 230, yeah. they should know that that's a homeschool event. It is a homeschool activity, yeah. Okay, yeah, right. okay. Right. so they don't say, well, I want to go out there now because it's a snow day today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I didn't say there's a snow day on Monday. No, folks. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Get up for school. <laughs> uh, anyway, the the 23rd is the hot chocolate walk, and you, you got to get out there for the hot chocolate walk. That's uh, the one that's going to be Camp Geneva. Yep. And that, is that registration required? Also? It is. Yeah, that is to call actually the township. It's it's right on the calendar there, so you'll end up calling them um, okay. for registration. Well, that's what's going to happen with you guys. But yeah. did you know on the 23rd, I'm going to join Dan. Over at the DeBoer Bakery. I was just noticing that. Yeah. I'm going to be with Dan in the morning. You have to listen on your way to work because I'm going to be over there chit-chatting. But I can't stay long because i got to go to school. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it'll be early. Okay. It'll be early. And we're. Uh, I, I hope Dan's going to have some breakfast ready for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, Jamie, I appreciate you coming out. Pleasure and, to be uh, here. I, it's, it's fun every time. I, sometimes I try not to go look at the calendar. Because so I you want get to be surprised. Yeah, yeah I like yeah, the excitement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, much like that new building that's going yeah, on. That's People right. are going to have to stay tuned to find out about that stuff. I'll be back. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> awesome. I appreciate very much that you came in, and I hope everybody enjoyed our show today. And we'll talk to you next week right here on The Outdoor Show.